welcome, Will. How about that phrase? An extraordinary man in an ordinary world. Can you reflect on that for a few moments? Well, I believe that the world is extraordinary, you know, and I'm really pretty ordinary. But it's how people view you, you know. One of the things that always bothered me was people always wondered, well, where do you sleep? How big is the bed that you, you sleep in, you know? Uh, it never bothered me. It was pretty easy just to curl up and go to sleep. But people view you in a certain certain way. And because you're a foot taller or so than the average average guy, to them, that foot sometimes is five or six. Uh, an old lady once asked me how tall I was. And I said, 6'11". I was in high school at the time. And she said, I just lied to her that like you couldn't believe. She said, you got to be nine feet tall. Well, people see you as being something much more than what I see myself as being. Mm -hmm. You are a loner. You don't do this much. Why? Well, because I'm really very content with myself. I'm, I'm happy about what I'm about. I, I don't need uh, people to lean on. I uh, enjoy people. I love them. I love to interact. But basically, I like to reflect, and I have to do that by myself. I, I'm very happy being, being alone. Mm -hmm. People have talked about you being a, a bit of a mystery man. Sometimes you will go three or four days without eating. Sometimes, and it's fact, you have gotten into a car and just driven as far as you can drive. In fact, you drove on a whim across country. What do you think about the mystery behind Will Chamberlain? Well, it's pretty ordinary to me, once again. You know, you're right. You say a whim. I love to drive. See, but I love to be alone. I've always driven by myself. I've gone across country 20 times, maybe. Always alone. What do you think about when you drive? Oh, a number of things. Uh, who I am, what I'd like to be, uh, going fast, uh, looting things that you shouldn't be doing, things you shouldn't be doing, maybe a little faster than you should, you should be going, flirting a little bit with, uh, not with death, but, you know, just those things that seem to be uh, what we like to do, but a little bit afraid of. I mean, I want to ski at over 100 miles an hour. When I ride my cars, I'm going as much as 180 and 170 miles an hour. And uh, most people dream of doing those things, but never have enough nerve maybe to try them. You couldn't win being Wilt, because if you succeeded, it was, hey, of course he's going to succeed. He's seven feet one and one sixteenth. But if you lose, man, oh, man, look out, because Wilt was expected to win all the time, right? Right. In fact, uh, Dr. Farsi Allen, who was a coach at the University of Kansas, when I uh, signed the University of Kansas, he said, we'll win three national championships with this, this guy. All we need is two five-beta cappers and two two girls and him, and we can beat any, anybody. <laughs> right. And that sort of set, set the stage, you know, for uh, you just had to win it all or you did nothing at all. Did it hurt to not win? You know, of course. Uh, you know, I, I was raised in a very competitive world of, of sports, and uh, losing is something that you don't like to accept. Every time you lost at anything, whether you lost missing a foul shot, lost a whole game, it bothered me a great, great deal. It found... In fact, it probably bothered me more than I even realized. Were you as great as you were because of the time, or would you be as great now? I mean, there, there's, you know, 15 seven-footers now. There were three in your era, or two in your era. Well, I, I disagree with you there. I think it was a lot of big guys when I played, guys who weighed more than I did, a few guys taller than I was, a lot of seven-footers. But today, the guys are much more ath ath athletic. But I think sometimes when you have all that going for you in the body, how is your head? I watch a Kareem out there now. I think the center position has suffered. I think they have lousy centers right now. They're two or three who are any good. The rest of them couldn't make Overbrook High School. Mm -hmm. you know and you, you still talk about Kareem as yeah. the guy that just doesn't do it for the rebounds. I don't right. know how much of that is needle. I don't no. know. Well, some of it's needle, but he can still go out there and do it scoring-wise on these guys who, you know, should be killing him up and down the court or what have you. That's because I believe they have athletic ability, but they don't use this right up, right, right up, right up here, which a great many athletes don't do. But I think that basketball players today are much better as athletes, but some of them, their thinking process as far as the game is concerned. I want to go back to Kareem for a second. Mm -hmm. He has known you since he's 14 years old. People don't realize that uh, you guys grew up. Uh, you took him under your wing. You befriended him. You showed him the ropes. You literally gave him the shirt off your back. You used to give him your own clothes. Mm -hmm. Took him to the Latin Quarter in New York once upon a time. Why aren't you guys closer? Well, I, you know, I would say that, you know, athletes are really tough people to... They have a lot of pride, you understand? They're very, very competitive. And him and I are natural rivals. 
even though we grew up together in one way, we still are rivals. People put us against each other. Why, I don't know. He puts a different game than I ever played. But I think it also works on him. I would love to be more friendly with, with Kareem, but maybe he's in a different world than I am right, right now. I know this right here. I think if I came to Kareem and said, hey, how about letting me tell him the novice, it wouldn't be, a, wouldn't be a problem. The other guy that you're most associated with and always have been, and some, something you almost don't even want to talk about anymore, but I'm going to bring it up anyway, is Bill Russell. And people also theorize that the reason there has been a kind of thin feud between the two of you, if at all, is because that you got a bad rap through Russell, that Russell was always considered the more sensitive ball player, the more intelligent ball player, the more team-oriented ball player, and ultimately, of course, the more successful ball player. You guys were once upon a time very, very close, but all of that stuff, all that baggage added up, and it split you guys apart. Mm-hmm. I would, I would think that, that there is a little bit of a myth involved. We were very, very close at one time, and uh, Russell had some statements to make uh, after he got out of basketball that I think were somewhat unkind to me. Like? Uh, like that when I came out of the game, uh, which was the seventh game against Boston in L.A. with a knee problem, I tore apart my Achilles tendon, and he said at a, some type of speech that he would have never left the game this sort of a broken back, so something like that, you know. But then he apologized a few years later on, but never to me, but through the press or what have you. But you must understand, once again, you're talking about a guy who's filled with a lot of pride. I've been fortunate, Roy. Uh, off the court, I've probably done better than I, had, I did on the, on the court. Some of these guys have not been so successful off of the court. And it's hard for them sometimes to face their contemporaries and look at them the same way they would like to because they don't feel as comfortable about where they are now in life compared to what they were doing when they were playing basketball. Russell won 11 world championships. He was on a team that won a great many games and was given all the accolades that possible can give. But today, I'm not so sure that he is a very happy man. Wilt Chamberlain, we know the outer Wilt Chamberlain. In a few moments, we'll talk about the inner Wilt Chamberlain after this. this autobiography, Wilt Will Chamberlain said that he's just like any average seven foot one inch black millionaire bachelor. We talk a little bit about Wilt at home because we never get a chance to see Wilt in other areas. People don't know this about you. First of all, as a kid, and I'm say this to embarrass you because I wouldn't want to do that, but that you sucked your thumb till you were in high school. That's right, right? almost in high school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that you have really never had a serious relationship before. You are a loner, as we said before. Mm -hmm. There's been little romance and mm -hmm. no desire to marry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True? Well, true. T I mean, I never believe in closing the door or anything at all. Uh, I never say never. I'm from a, a very successful family of marriage, as far as I'm concerned. My mother and father have married for almost 50 years. Uh, and I have a great respect for the institution. But I think in today's world, there's almost no place for it. You know, when they look at you, Will, when everybody looks at you, they see a man who is indestructible. Ever been hurt by a woman? Mm, not really, no. No. I, not that I can think of. Uh, Is I've, that been, I've been hurt about by the, the multitudes. <laughs> All the ones that say no for whatever reasons. <laughs> but, I mean, is that because maybe you don't let people in as close as you might or could? And that because of that you, you, you know, disassoci disassociate yourself a little bit? Well, you distance I, yourself a little bit? I would say maybe there might be a fear of, uh, of getting too close and then getting hurt. And, yeah, that's, that's natural, I think. I think we all have that, you know. But basically, I feel as though that uh, I have to find someone who is comparable. And that's almost impossible for me to do. What scares you? Uh, probably not old age, but not being able to do the things that I now am capable of doing, not being able to function as an athlete, not being able to uh, take care of your, yourself. Uh, I think that you can get old gracefully and enjoy it, but uh, being able to do the things that I love to do. It's interesting you say that, growing old gracefully, because Will Chamberlain is not afforded that right particularly. You always have to look like you could play. You've even said that before. You're not allowed to become flabby. Does that bother you? Does it frustrate you a little bit? I think that uh, it normally it would, but in this case it helps to uh, give me inspiration, incite me to uh, do the things that are necessary to keep your body in shape and uh, be as healthy as you possibly can. But you're right, sometimes it's tough. It's tough because you realize that people are always looking at you and they always want to know, well, can he or can he not go out there and play or what have you? 
What's the last time, when is the last time you cried? Cried? Um, the last time I cried was uh, uh, a friend of mine who had a serious Ill illness, which was a matter of just a couple of weeks ago. See, the point I'm making mm -hmm. is that nobody thinks Will Chamberlain cries, nobody thinks Will Chamberlain hurts. And there's got to be, because of that, yeah. a lot of pent-up stuff right. somewhere, unless right. you do it a lot behind closed no, doors. No, it's, uh, you know, I, I believe what you're saying is true. Uh, bigness, I mean, just, just big in the exterior, physical bigness, right, kind of brings it on. Your people just look at you as being impenetrable, whatever. They think if you're small, anything can hurt you. If you're big, nothing will, will hurt you. And that's the phrase from the truth. There's a responsibility of bigness. You've got to have the biggest house. You've got to have mm -hmm. the biggest appetite. You've got to have the right. best women, right. the biggest car. Right. Uh -huh. That stuff adds up. Yeah, well, in some cases, I've put that on, on my, myself. In some cases, I've, I've wanted to have the fastest car, the nicest this, the nicest that. But a lot of that still is natural, you know. But I think that you have to realize that you can't have all these things. Will Chamberlain, we're going to talk about the people and places down through the years in his wonderful career. We'll do it after this. A claim is a lot more important than what anybody would say about him. Will Chamberlain is our guest. I want to ask uh, you about a running commentary, more or less on, on different subjects. First of all, were there drugs in your era? Did you ever experiment with drugs? No, I never did, uh, but there were drugs. There were drugs, but much more booze. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Red Auerbach, or the man that uh, you never even mentioned by name, you just refer to him as the man I don't like. Your comments on him? Yeah, well, uh, probably the best coach to ever coach uh, professional basketball. Uh, very big ego ego egotist and used me as a ploy to help the Nick Russell great. Mm. Racial bitterness. You have very little, if any. I have none because I understand, I think, a lot of uh, what racial, uh, all that malarkey is all about. I, I've, I've been lucky enough to uh, see people come into love, and that's what it's all about. Now, you are in the minority in a certain level. I mean, uh, you are an ultra-conservative. Mm -hmm. You were a supported Nixon. Mm -hmm. uh, you have come under attack for that. Mm -hmm. Certainly uh, you take none of that back. I mean, that's the I way I would you definitely do it again. Definitely do it again. Why? Still, still, cause, uh, because I believe very, very strongly at the time that uh, Nixon was the best for our country and the foreign affairs he was the best at it and we need to get all that together. Uh, I believe strongly today that, uh, you know, being conservative is the way, way to go. I'm not really a Reagan fan, but uh, I'm still a Republican, I think. What would you say, here's, here's what I'm trying to get, get at. What would you say if someone said, tell me something about Wilt that we wouldn't know, give me one, one, you know, paragraph about uh, yourself. Uh, I think that I believe in love, and I believe that we all have to reach out a whole lot more to everybody, whether it's color, race, sex, uh, this country, or whatever, and just touch and see. I was fortunate enough to travel the world a number of times with the globe dress, whatever, and see that we all are really alike, and we all need the one basic thing, is love, and with that understanding. With love, there is, at times, sex, and Abs people... Ab yeah. ab absolutely. Absolutely, say, absolutely. Yeah. Sex, important in your life? Oh, always has, has been. I, I think that uh, it's a natural function. I think that uh, it's helped to keep me alive and well and still have many dreams in that, in that fashion. Yeah, sex is very important. There is a lot of myth and legend associated with Wilt Chamberlain, as you might imagine, and, and sex. Mm -hmm, uh, how mm -hmm. much of that is true? One, are, are you? 100% of it. <laughs> <laughs> super stud, I mean, what is that? Come on. I mean, no, super stud is, is in one's imagination. I just want to be satisfying. Uh -huh. The right ass, but satis satisfying. I want to be able to satisfy. The perfect uh, woman is for you? Uh, one who is intelligent, one who laughs a lot at herself and at other people, one who enjoys a great deal of sex and can really cook. Real? <laughs> <laughs> How about uh, 72 Lakers? Uh, the team that I think did the most with the least amount of talent. Greatest team you ever played on? Philadelphia 76ers of 1967, 1968. Greatest player you ever faced. Would it automatically be, be Bill Russell or maybe a surprise us here? No, no uh, not at all. I think Bill Russell uh, did a great deal for his team. Uh, uh, there was a lot of great, great players I played. Willis, Willis Reed, uh, Nate Thurman, uh, Oscar Robertson, Jerry West. I faced these guys, Elgin, Elgin Beller, and I played against them. I played against teams, not individuals, and uh, uh, Russell was just one of the great players that I had a chance to play against. Mm -hmm.